FNAF is by far one of the only horror games to have masked the amount of success that it's had over the years, and with that success, it was bound to have multiple copycats, ripoffs, and etc. Okay. But it also had many fan games, and I mean literally thousands of fan games. Many are still being made today, 10 years after the first FNAF release. And due to there being so many fan games, we're going to take a look at some of the best, scary, underrated, and so on animatronics in those games. And we'll even look at some that were never featured in fan games as well. So welcome to the ultimate fan made FNAF animatronic iceberg. Before we get into this video, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now I'm sure many of you know how an iceberg video works, so I'm not going to bother explaining how it works. But a quick disclaimer, all credit to the creators of the animatronics are in the description, so please feel free to check out their other games, projects, or animatronics after this video. Anyways, let's get into layer 1. Baddington is a FNAF YouTuber known for his FNAF VHS videos that have high quality production. Many of his videos are recreations of other FNAF VHS videos, but instead are remade with his own custom animatronics. The animatronics are based off of the FNAF Plus animatronics, but are fused with the Rock of Fire Explosion character element instead of the normal FNAF animatronics. Freddy has a more rubbery face, along with a bigger snout and sharper teeth. Freddy also has less visible joints and is also sporting a vest along with pants. Bonnie also has a vest and pants similar to Freddy, but this time Bonnie has a bigger face along with rosy red cheeks and big beady eyes. Chica on the other hand has one eye broken along with a more droopy beak. Everything is the same about her except for the pink bow tie and pants, with even the cupcake having a complete redesign. Foxy is probably the creepiest and the most human-like out of the bunch. Foxy has very realistic eyes that almost make him look human, and I think the rest can speak for itself in terms of how good these designs are. Now everyone knows what FNAF Plus is, the very popular cancelled FNAF fan game that was a complete reimagining of FNAF 1. This game is arguably one of the most popular FNAF fan games ever, and so are the animatronics. All of the animatronics combine elements from the FNAF 1 animatronics, and also slightly combine elements from the Withered in FNAF 2. Freddy is the most normal out of all of them, having black pants and a vest on, along with maintaining his iconic look. Bonnie on the other hand looks terrifying, with the big bug eyes and his face almost looking like a skull. He is also wearing pants that has straps on. On them, and he also holds a banjo instead of a guitar. Chica is the main animatronic that takes heavy inspiration from FNAF 2 Withered Chica, as seen by her mouth. Foxy was also heavily given the FNAF 2 treatment, but at the same time almost has the face of Nightmare Foxy. These animatronics are some of the scariest, but Foxy and the rest of the animatronics I feel like break the immersion because they try way too hard to be scary, and they just wouldn't fit in a children's pizzeria. But regardless, they are still definitely some of the most popular fan-made FNAF animatronics ever. Juniors is a FNAF fan game based off of the building we see in the Midnight Motorist minigame in FNAF Pizzeria Simulator. The game takes a more retro and stylized look to all the animatronics seen throughout the nights, with the game having a decent sized roster of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Balloon Baby, Marionette, while also having withered versions of all these characters as well. We also can't forget probably the most known out of the whole game, the Mangle. All these characters are given a furry body, along with having more details that make them appeal to kids more while also maintaining an uncanny valley feel from them. This goes the same for the Withered variant. They, for the most part, share the same features, but are just modeled to look more like the FNAF 2 versions instead. The only characters that stray away from these design choices are Mangle, Marionette, and Balloon Baby. Marionette and Balloon Baby share many features, the main one being that they look like porcelain dolls more than anything. And Mangle, well, he looks like a scorpion. It's massive in size, and has a little pet owl attached to its sea of parts, and it's probably one of my favorite animatronics ever. Pop Goes is a FNAF fan game series that takes place in an alternative universe, where only the first three FNAF games are canon, while also sharing a continuity with Five Nights at Candy's. Now Pop Goes has a lot of animatronics throughout its many games, and cancelled games, to look at. So we're going to take a look at some of the most popular from the series, with obviously the most popular one being Pop Goes the Weasel. The most well known version of this character is the Pop Goes Evergreen version, most well known for his green attire. But then there is also the original versions from the earlier versions of the games, with Pop Goes having a way longer torso and also having no clothes on.
The joy of creation is only really known for one thing, and that is the animatronics. The ignited animatronics have been a fan favorite ever since the FNAF franchise started, with them blowing up in popularity after the game came out. The ignited animatronics consist of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Golden Freddy, Springtrap, and Creation. All of the animatronics are extremely broken down and, at times, burnt versions of the FNAF counterparts, with the only exception being Creation. It's no surprise these animatronics became infamous in the FNAF community, with them being unique recreations of the original FNAF designs. And with them also being terrifying in gameplay. Creation, on the other hand, is a combination of all of those animatronics, having three legs, four arms, with the head of Freddy. Plus, it also looks like a spider, so yeah. One Night at Flumpty's is one of the first original FNAF fan games, releasing way back in 2015. This game was one of the first fan games that included original characters not originated from FNAF, with it including Flumpty, Birthday Boy Slam, The Beaver, Redman, Grunkfuss, and Golden Flumpty. As you can tell, every character is very unique from one another and are all inspired from Humpty Dumpty and other media in the fantasy genre. There is also many other characters from the three other sequels, but since One Night at Flumpty's has some of the more well-known ones, I won't bother looking at those ones, especially since many characters return in those games. Five Nights at Candy's is also one of the first FNAF fan games to have original characters, like how One Nights at Flumpty's had, with it also releasing the same year as Flumpty's in 2015. Candy's includes, well, Candy, Cindy, Blank, Chester, Penguin, Old Candies, The Rat, and Vinny. Each animatronic has very similar vibes to the animatronics seen in FNAF 2, like the toys, Mangle, and the puppet. Candy and Cindy are both cats that are very reminiscent of the toy animatronics. Blank reminds me of Mangle, being all torn up and also having children's drawings all over him. Chester follows the toy animatronic design, same as Candy and Cindy, with just being a monkey instead. Penguin, yet again, follows the same formula as the rest, but is just the Penguin. Old Candy is just a withered OG version of the normal Candy, but but instead is deep blue instead of the light blue normal candy has. The rat follows the same design as old candy, looking all beat up while missing some parts of his body, but Vinny is literally just a reskin of the puppet, so yeah. Only OG FNAF fans will know about the draw kills, because in the early days of the FNAF franchise, these were quite literally everywhere. You couldn't go on the internet without seeing one of these somewhere. The draw kills were made by an artist called, well, Draw Kill. These animatronics became an instant classic because of their very steampunky and post-apocalyptic aesthetic, which till this day hasn't been replicated. Freddy sports a canister of some sort on his back, while also having a giant row of stitches on his chest. Bonnie has giant hands, and also has some strange design on his chest. Chica has a visible rib cage and also has gill-like appendages on her arm. Foxy is missing a lot of his torso, showing his ribs as well, and is missing all of his left leg. Oh yeah, you also can't forget his giant hook either. Yeah, I mean, not much else to say about these. These are just a classic and like everyone should know these. Tyke and Sons is one of the most underrated FNAF fan games on this list. Based on Scott Cawthon's Chipper and Sons Lumber Co., it combines both elements from that game and FNAF all into one. I would definitely check this game out, as it's probably one of the most well-made FNAF fan games ever. Anyways, taking a look at the animatronics, we can notice a very similar theme on most of them, with the most popular and arguably best-looking animatronics being Kill Timber, Sea Billy, Summer Crab, and Happy Shroom. These are all the main animatronics seen throughout the game. Kill Timber looks very similar to the Beaver character seen in the game, while also maintaining the same vibes as the nightmares and withered animatronics. Sea Billy is basically just a recreation of Ennard, just an amalgamation of wires and parts with sharp teeth like the nightmares have and broken like the withereds are as well. Summer Crab is one of my favorite fan-made animatronics ever as well, just because of how unique it is. Taking a look at it, you can immediately tell that it is a recreation of Springtrap in a way, with the color scheme, the red parts sticking out looking like flesh, and the fact that it is also withered. Also just take a look at that mouth, Bro gives Wither Chica a run for her money. But looking at Happy Shroom now, this animatronic also is one of the most unique I've ever seen too. Taking many characteristics from Nightmare Freddy, with the sharp teeth, hands, little mushrooms instead of freddles, yeah, I think you get the point. These are just some of the most unique in my opinion, and it takes a lot of characteristics from other FNAF games. Over the years, Treasure Island has gotten many of games and re-releases, but we're going to take a look at the original animatronics in this game, which are some of the most well-known. Treasure Island includes many characters, but we're only going to take a look at some of them, with those being Photo Negative Mini, 
Oswald, The Face, Suicide Mouse, and Disembodied. Many of these characters are very self-explanatory. I mean, they are just Disney characters. Photo Negative Mini is exactly that, based off of the Treasure Island creepypasta story where the narrator encounters a character that looks the same as this. Oswald is an all-black character with dark blue accents. With the body of a rabbit, he doesn't have much to say about him, but he sure as hell is difficult to see. The face is a reskin of Mickey Mouse, instead without legs and with having human eyes and very weird ears. Suicide Mouse is also based off of the creepypasta of the same name, and is just a black and white version of Mickey. Disembodied is the head of Donald Duck with black eyes, not much else. These might not be the most special animatronics, but people who were part of the FNAF community in the early days should have a special place in their hearts for these. Oblitas Casa is the newest version of Five Nights in Treasure Island, including a majority of the same characters, but with them looking heavily improved and way better. Now this game has literally dozens of animatronics, like over 20 plus when you count all the unique variants and so on. So we're just going to take a look at the main ones, which are Willy, Belial, Daisy, The Face, Photo Negative Mini, Pete, and Dippy. Willy is based off of the Steamboat Willy version of Mickey, which is black and white with a white hat. Belial is based off of Disney's, hold on, let's try not to butcher this, or Tunisia. I don't know, I think that's it, maybe not, anyways, with major differences. The character is halfway melted, with no lower body, and also has black with slight colors that are faded. Daisy is the head of Daisy Duck, with tentacle-like appendages coming from the base of the head. The face has three unique versions, but we will look at the main one. He is the same as the Treasure Island version, but with better textures, basically. He also has realistic eyes, and also appears to be melted. Photo Negative Mini is the same as Photo Negative Mickey, but just Minnie Mouse. She has realistic eyes as well, and also has a very shiny texture to her. Pete is based off of the original version of him from Steamboat Willie. He is the same color scheme as Willie and is basically just a one of one creation of Pete. Dippy is a black and white character which resembles Goofy. The name is a reference to Goofy's original name and not much else can be said about him since he's kind of just basic. These ones were a little hard to describe mainly because they're just recreations of Disney characters so I mean as, as long as you knew who the characters were then you should know who they were based off of and all that. Five Nights at Chuck E. Cheese also has two versions, the 2015 version and the rebooted version. The 2015 version of the animatronics are not very good, so we'll take a look at the rebooted versions instead. Now, if you know anything about Chuck E. Cheese, you should know the animatronics. But if not, then there's Chuck E. Cheese, Jasper, Mr. Munch, Helen, Pasquale, Krusty the Cat, and exclusive to the games, Costume. All these animatronics are based off of the late 70s and early 80s versions of these animatronics, which means they are all portrait versions of them. So that means they don't have a lower body. So if you know what these look like in real life, well, not much change for them in the game versions. Anyways, Chuck E. Cheese looks like, well, Chuck E. Cheese, duh. Jasper wears a western hat and a red flannel and a pair of overalls. He is also missing his hand and has a banjo. Mr. Munch is a purple monster with yellow hair and eyebrows. He has sharp teeth and is also very similar to the modern Mr. Munch. Helen is a white chicken with brownish hair and also has blood on her beak. She has lifelike hands and also uses a guitar. Pasquale wears a chef's outfit and also holds pizza in his hand. Crusty the Cat wasn't in the original Five Nights at Chuck E. Cheese. He's the most withered out of the animatronics with white eyes and a baseball shirt that is all stained. Costume also didn't appear in the OG Five Nights at Chuck E. Cheese and is just a costume version of Chuck E. Cheese. Fred Bear and Friends is a game that takes place in Fred Bear's family diner, so we get to see fan-made iterations of some characters from the FNAF franchise, with some of those iterations being Fred Bear, Spring Bonnie, Prototype, Rotten Freddy, Rotten Bonnie, Rotten Chica, Rotten Foxy, and so on. This game does have more animatronics, but these ones are the best in my opinion, so we'll look at these ones. Fred Bear looks exactly like he would in the games, and I'd say it matches a lot to what an unnightmared version of him would look like from FNAF 4. Spring Bonnie looks a lot like Bonnie, and not so much like what a Spring Bonnie suit would look like in the actual FNAF games, but I think it looks really good. Prototype is, well, a prototype of the endoskeleton. He has a very wide frame and a very weird thing around his head. Like, are those ears? I, I can't really tell. The rotten animatronics all look the same in a sense. They are all basically just withered animatronics, but more realistic in the way they age. They are melting and are rotten from age, which makes the suits look as if they're falling off from the endoskeletons. These are some of my favorite iterations of the withered animatronics as they look the most realistic. 
Five Nights at Wario's is one of the fan games of all time. Probably one of the most random fan games on this list, but it is a classic, so I couldn't skip it. This game includes Wario, Waluigi, Luigi, Mario, and Peach. Wario and Waluigi are completely normal looking, apart from the fact their eyes are white. Luigi is the same, apart from him just having black eyes. Same goes with Peach, she just has black eyes and a blacked out mouth too. Mario is the only one who is semi-unique looking. He has no head, only a floating hat, mustache, and glowing white eyes. Yeah, these ones were quick to explain, but not all of them need super complex explanations on this list. These ones are just a classic and you can't forget these. Sinister Terminal is a cancelled fan game that is very popular for how much of a letdown it was for being cancelled, but is also well known for its animatronics. The Sinister animatronics are recreations of the main five animatronics from FNAF, those being Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Golden Freddy. They all have the same bodies as they do in FNAF 2, with some notable differences. Those being the sharp teeth they have, along with them also having no eyes. Bonnie also has his face still in this rendition of the animatronic. These animatronics are what I imagine a fuse of the Withered and the Nightmares would look like, and they look really high quality, so it's a shame that the game got cancelled. LEGO FNAF is exactly what it sounds like. It's FNAF but LEGO. So these animatronics are also very self-explanatory. The game was unfortunately pulled due to copyright reasons, but the first game can still be found online and played. We were originally going to get the first three games, but that'll never happen since the game got cancelled. Anyways, here's a look at the animatronics. As I said, it's literally just FNAF but LEGOs, but yeah. I'd say they look pretty much like LEGOs, like if these were real LEGOs, I think this is very very good and they probably would look like this in real life. Not much to explain, they're just LEGOs and I think they are really cool looking. Five Nights at Krusty Krab is exactly what it sounds like. You spend five nights at the Krusty Krab while you try not to die. It's another one of the classic FNAF fan games and is very well known amongst the OG FNAF community. The game includes Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs. All the characters are designed as robots instead of them being based off of the actual characters. Do I really need to explain these ones? I mean, like, I will, but like, th who doesn't know Spongebob? Like, Spongebob is a yellow sponge. Boom, <laughs> he's explained. And Patrick is obviously a pink starfish, but in this iteration he has buck teeth for some reason, like I don't think he ever had buck teeth in the show. Sandy is a squirrel, and she's missing her glass helmet for some reason, but I guess she's a robot in this game so it doesn't matter. Squidward is Squidward, obviously he's turquoise and whatnot, but for some reason in this game he is super thin and doesn't look the same as he does in the show. Like his head is just a cylinder, I, I don't know why, but yeah. And then Mr. Krabs looks like, well, Mr. Krabs. Okay, next game, that's it, don't need to explain these anymore. Twisted Carnival is a newer fan game that is still being developed. It takes place in a carnival and has very creepy animatronics all based off of the main four in FNAF, with those being Bear Hug, Bonzo, Trixie, and Foxtrot. All these animatronics are very unique, and if you've been listening to this video instead of watching, I'd recommend looking now because I can't really explain these ones. Bear Hug is obviously Freddy, with a very creepy face with a yellow bow tie and hat. Bonzo is Bonnie, he also has the same creepy face as Freddy and has a very distinct red bow tie. Trixie is the most unique out of the bunch, with a very different design compared to the others. Chixie is Chica, but is a cheerleader version instead. She has pom-poms and wears very different clothes. Foxtrot is Foxy, but has a very different face compared to how Foxy does in the FNAF games. He looks the same as the rest and isn't as withered as he is in FNAF 1. These animatronics are very creepy and are very well made, and honestly, they are just very, very oversized for like how they would be in real life or whatever you're trying to replicate, and I think it makes them look way more ominous and terrifying. Shadow Over Freddy's is a very interesting FNAF game, not because of the animatronics, but because of the gameplay. It's a point and click free roam game, unlike many other free roam FNAF games. This game has a very simple roster of characters, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and the puppet. They are all one to one recreations with small minor different details compared to the originals. The main difference is that they are all black and white and have white eyes instead. The reason I included them is just because of the simplicity behind them. They aren't overdone or excessively creepy, they are just simple. And as you can see right now, they're just recreations. There's there's nothing really special about them, they're just kind of spooky looking. The Final Nights franchise has a lot of animatronics, many of them kind of bad, but there is a few good ones that we will be looking at, those being Reaper Puppet and Reaper Balloon Boy. Even though this game doesn't have a lot of good animatronics, I think these make up for it. Reaper Puppet is a demonic version of the puppet, with tentacle-like appendages as legs and arms. Its body and face almost looks organic and not like an animatronic would, and the same goes for Reaper Balloon Boy. He has very contorted arms that almost double the size of his body. He looks almost like a cracked porcelain 
Porcelain Doll, or like a Melted Animatronic. No in between. These two just look like demons. I would say that's the best way to describe them, because like, what the hell are these? I, I don't know a better way to describe them other than that. Before we start the final layer, I'd like to mention to you guys that subscribing really helps the channel. If you are already subscribed, joining my membership also really helps, and allows me to make daily shorts and weekly long form content. Anyways, enough of the plugging, let's get into this layer. These animatronics don't come from a game, but rather a fan-made rendition of the FNAF Plus animatronics. Made by Rata's, these versions are a more realistic take on the animatronics from FNAF Plus, making them appear a little bit more kid-friendly than the FNAF Plus ones are. Freddy looks really good, still maintaining the same jacket and clothing while also having a toned-down face that isn't exaggerated. Bonnie isn't as terrifying, he still has a skull-shaped head and similar clothing, but at least his eyes aren't staring into my soul as much anymore. Chica is still broken looking, but looks less broken than the original FNAF Plus version does. She still has a messed up jaw and eye, but the difference is noticeable. Foxy looks something straight out of a nightmare, but due to the excessive withering, I think this is to be expected. Even his endoskeleton parts have more detail than they would normally. Personally, I like these versions more than the normal FNAF Plus versions, but that's just my own personal opinion. I think these are a better and more realistic take than the FNAF Plus versions are. A Bite at Freddy's is one of the newer FNAF fan games on this list. A Bite at Freddy's includes the same portrait animatronic style seen in Five Nights at Chuck E. Cheese. This game incorporates the original FNAF animatronics and the original 80s style all into one which gives them a very stylish design. The game includes talk show Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Threadbare. Freddy is very bare bones, not having his mic or anything. He wears a nice red suit and a top hat. Bonnie wears a pink suit and also holds a glass of wine and a cigar. Chica is a cowgirl, brandishing a gun and wearing cowboy attire. Foxy is now a scientist, wearing thick glasses and also holding a pencil tool. Threadbare is a recreation of Fredbear, wearing a scion suit and a purple top hat, and holding a wand, to be honest, I, I don't really know what that is, but yeah. He is withered and also has a chunk of his head bandaged. These animatronics are some of my favorite in recent time due to the style they have, and because I mean they just look so damn good. I mean, these are some of the highest quality animatronics we've seen in a very long time. These actually look like something that would be in a kid's pizzeria, not like the FNAF Plus animatronics are, like these are really really, really good. So this game doesn't have a wiki page, meaning I don't know the info behind this game or how many animatronics are in it and so on, but I wanted to include it because of the couple animatronics I've seen from this game. I think the game has four animatronics, those being the trickster, the corpse, the demon, and the machine. The trickster is a clown character with a huge mouth, white eyes, and I think we've also seen this in the FNAF franchise as well. The corpse is what I think to be Michael Afton, but I might be wrong. He wears no shirt, has no eyes, and looks to be stuffed with animatronic parts. The demon is a creature similar to Enter and it's just a creepy looking endoskeleton. The machine is just scrap baby, nothing else. I wish I had more information on this game because it looks very interesting and it has some good character designs in my opinion. The Night Toys are one of my favorite fan-made animatronics ever, just because of how underrated they are. I don't even think I need to explain these, just look at them and you'll understand why these are on the list because like, what are these bro, these are terrifying. These animatronics literally look like nightmares, actually never mind, scratch that. They look like they came out of a nightmare and came into the real world. They look like real life organisms, not even animatronics. Yep, yeah, end the video now, these are, these beat all the other animatronics, these, this is it, end the video now. Just kidding. And just kidding, the video's not over yet, we got one more to go. Okay, time to the final one, let's go, let's go to the final one. Tealer Land is crazy in the amount of detail these animatronics have, along with how unique they are as well. I know I said that like a hundred times in this video, but like, just, just look at these ones and you'll see what I mean. This game has a lot of animatronics as well, but we are only going to take a look at three of them. Those being Teeler, Frill, and Deter. Teeler is a dragon animatronic. I mean, just look at him. Like, bro is so cool. Like, we've never seen a dragon animatronic before until this, I think. He wears a jester hat and wears medieval clothing, which has the same color scheme as photo negative Mickey. He also carries an axe, which might explain why he has blood on it. Frill is a lizard that dresses up like a knight. He carries a sword and has a very menacing look on his face. I mean, I don't know what else to say about him. He's a knight and he looks sweet. The turn is an amalgamation of almost every animatronic in this game, having characteristics seen on other characters. They are are dragon creatures, one holding an axe while the other holds a sharp blade attached to their arm. As you can see, they do share many details seen in the animatronics we just looked at, and it blends them together very well. This game is super underrated and so are the animatronics from it, so hopefully this video will show some appreciation towards it and its characters.
Well, that is the end of the ultimate fan-made FNAF animatronic iceberg. I do apologize if I couldn't explain these well, or if some of them were explained fairly quick. Some of them you just kind of had to look at to understand what I was talking about and so on, so I didn't want to waste your guys' time explaining and yapping too much. Because I do tend to do that a lot, so I just, I hope you guys just looked at them instead of actually listening to this video. Anyways, I'm sure I missed many other good animatronics, but if this video does do good, I'd totally be fine with making a part 2 for you guys. If I missed anything, any details, or any information, feel free to add it into the comments because I'm sure I have. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you like this iceberg you can watch this playlist right here filled with all of my iceberg videos. Thank you to our channel members and make sure to check out my other icebergs in the playlist right now if you are interested. We have one about creepypastas, one about FNAF hoaxes, and so many more. Anyways have a great day and I hope you enjoyed the video.